Would you personally define, I guess, the behavior and the treatment that this, you know, the leadership toward the the members, uh, just sort of the overall structure of it? Would you would you personally define it as something along the lines of like spiritual abuse, emotional abuse? Would you would you use the word from your own experience? Would you look at that and say, yes, I feel comfortable looking at the way this group functions and operates and say that this is rightly defined as an abusive environment. Yes, because their parallel comparison is always Christ when he was on earth and how he went about things and how he did things and how he approached the disciples, yada, yada. And they take things out of context in scripture all the time. And so they, they use that to obviously further their agenda. And in the process, whether that harms you or not, it's really considered like your own personal problem and you need to just overcome that, right? And so when you start to use scripture to get people to do things in a, in a manner that is extremely detrimental to them, that is abuse, you know? Yeah. And spiritually, religion is one of those things where people yeah, that's their safety net. That's where people find hope and purpose. And that that when that is being weaponized, especially for people who have not maybe understood it as much as they did before, and then this group has kind of yeah. given them meaning to it. Absolutely. Spiritual abuse is one of the main like mechanisms there to, to mm -hmm. people. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's like they take this this thing and that exists at least in in many of us the majority uh, of of people this thing inside us that wants to connect with with something with god with something higher with and find you know meaning and purpose and and, and understanding how to have you know a, a foundation for morality all this just this drive that exists in so many of us and they they take that mm -hmm. And they approach it not with a, you know, a loving and they're looking at that person wanting to genuinely help and, sh and point them in the right direction. And they're looking out for their interests. They, they, they look at that and they basically see, I don't, I don't know. It's like they see dollar signs or they see power um, and, and, and they want to grab onto the, to that. And, and they, yeah, they just take advantage of it. They they completely take advantage of that that thing in people, and use it for their own you know agenda for for their own gain. Yeah, and, and it it sounds so much like what you're you're describing is that throughout your experience, and it, and I think you already said it, but how long? Like how many years total? About five mm -hmm. years, a little bit more About than five, five actually. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. so for that five year period, it sounds to me like what what you kind of realized is that in terms of the leadership or their existing in this group and actual like a uh, compassion for you or a genuine concern or, or care for you as a person, uh, you know, the honesty and, and, you know, reliability that you could have on them. You just found that that wasn't really there. Um, which to me, again, just, just sort of goes to demonstrate what, what, exists at the core of this group, which I think would be, you know, you could, you could look at what Jesus said to the Pharisees so often, and he'd call them, you know, your whitewashed tombs. You have this outward appearance. You have all these, you know, things that look appealing on the surface to some, but if you get down at the heart level of what's really going on inside, it's full of dead men's bones. Yeah. And, and so, um, it, would you, I guess, relate to, to yeah. any of that? I think part of what you just said reminds me a lot of um, how hard they, keep, they try to keep this image that they have. They have a lot of front groups, right? Like Heavenly World Peace, like what they call HWPL is one of them, where they try and do these like, well, there's a lot of information out there, especially on the Reddit groups, if you look and for people who may want to find documents and just things that, you know, you can't find when you're there or you would never be told right. otherwise. Um, they want to look good, right? So even in the DMV, they would do these like um, service type of things. And in the service, like the leader would tell us like, you know, we, especially during COVID because COVID-19 was a really interesting time for them. 
because, mm -hmm. uh, you know, there was a huge spread in the Tegu church in Korea and, you know, the headquarters. And so a really high percent of people's COVID like was related back to the church. And it was attributed to like how we give service because everyone has sat in close quarters, you know, yada, yada. And, you know, they were headlining on CNN and, and then not in a good way. Right. And so before, if any negative things were said about them, it was like CNN was the enemy. You know, CNN is, this is why you shouldn't look at things out there. Don't read it was the thing. Do not read it. There was, there was instruction that was given to people about not looking or clicking on these articles, right? Because mm -hmm. it was like, this is poison. And if you eat from the tree of knowledge of good and evil, then what, what happened to Eve? And what happened to the generations to come? This is the kind of stuff, right? That they were saying. Well so they would use that terminology of yes. like looking online is eating from the tree of the knowledge of good and absolutely. evil. Absolutely, yeah. Okay. And Cause so this is this is exactly what the, the World Mission Society, Church of God, mm -hmm. they, it, that's the exact same thing. They tell yep. members do not go to the internet because if you do, basically it's gonna kill you spiritually.